us to weigh on in this. I'm glad that you're here, David, because you're like the most philosophical guy we have on. And to me, the opportunity economy thing is in the realm of philosophy right now, not economics. How do you break that down? I, I, and, and go to the spending, if you would, because I think that is kind of the hidden piece of it that she doesn't want to say, yeah. but we all know is the backbone of it. Yeah, I mean, philosophically, I believe in opportunity economy, too. It's called a free market economy. Right. And the problem is that she believes you can just create money out of nothing and that you can redirect assets, redistribute as a way of creating opportunity when all it really does is take from the pie. It's zero sum. It, do, it ignores economic growth. Mm. An opportunity the economy will always focus on what can produce new goods and services. That's what creates opportunity. That's what a market economy does. Mm. So we're looking at Fed that's going to start a series of interest rate cuts after we had massive inflation. And part of the Democrats' plan is to continue to spend more. If they do that, if they are in control and they get away with it, they're just going to spike inflation again. It doesn't make any sense to me. So here's uh, the position I'm in, Jackie, is I don't believe government spending creates inflation. I think that bad government activity creates inflation, and I think uh, big government spending is bad. But ultimately, I think it puts downward pressure. So this idea that it creates an economy that's too hot was really, I think, destroyed by the Japan narrative of 30 years. Nobody spent more than they did, and they had deflation for 30 years. Ultimately, we spent from $5 trillion up to $25 trillion in national debt with 1% inflation for to several presidents. Mm. The spike that we had the last couple of years was unique. The debt they left us is killing economic growth. Mm. I'm as critical of it as anyone could be, but I don't think it's why egg prices went up. I don't think that government spending is only inflationary for certain presidents, certain political environments. It's a bad idea because it's killing economic growth and it's going to hurt our kids and grandkids. Mm. Okay, so if it wasn't government spending, then what was it? It was, was it oil? Shut down the supply chain. I mean, fundamentally, they shut down our economy. Yeah. Uh, there was no production of goods and services. Then they reopened it, and lo and behold, everybody did want to go out to dinner. They did want to go to the store. They did want to be just... normal human beings, but there were no goods and services or labor. And they mm. took their stimmy checks. That's right. And they went and did those things. All right, moving on to the next question. Um, Trump is floating a new idea. He implemented SALT. And now he's saying maybe it's time to lift salt back. I, I know a lot of people in New York and New Jersey who'd be very happy about that. Um, policy wise, how does this play out? Yeah, well, you happen to have a high earning guest who has dual residency in California and New York on. And I'm one of the few people that had taxes go way up. <laughs> went after and you. yet here's the problem I'm in. I vehemently support not getting that deduction. So what I mean is I don't think Texans and South Dakotans should subsidize New Yorkers and Californians. So I'm in the position of agreeing with the first Trump on this one and not the, the new Trump. Uh, but it is uh, definitely a tax increase for high earners in blue states. Mm. And I can see why they want to get rid of it. It isn't popular. Yeah. But I, from a policy standpoint, Brian mentioned philosophy. Philosophically, I agreed with it the first time. Okay. Coming back to these markets, we did hear from billionaire hedge fund investor John Paulson. Take a listen to what he had to say. I think if, if Harris was elected, I would pull my money from the market. I'd go into cash and I'd go into gold because I think the uncertainty regarding the plans they outlined would create a lot of uncertainty in the markets. Really? Go to cash? Um, it's the worst advice I've ever heard for people listening at home. First of all, Carl Icahn will take the other side of that trade if he wants. Mm. I'll take the other side of the trade. People that have tried to do this on election night stuff, if the outcome doesn't go the way I like, I want to get out of the market, have gotten destroyed. I've dealt with it with clients for 25 years. People hated Trump, said they wanted to be out of the market. The market went up big. The market was up eight years in a row mm -hmm. under Barack Obama. The market is up quite a bit, actually, under Biden, even with the bad 2022 year. Earnings drive markets. Mm -hmm. Trying to trade around an election night result is a very bad idea. And when he says it might go to gold, the last time Paulson made a big gold call was 2011. It didn't go up for 10 years. Is there any credence, though, to, I think, what is behind his thought process of unrealized capital gains tax, a debt burden that is crushing us, unlimited spending, unlimited taxes yeah. that, again, we don't have a policy on when the ta stop taxing us, right? We're being taxed to oblivion. Is that sort of the thinking behind that? Yes, and it would be a fair thinking, just like the Build Back Better legislation that the Biden administration couldn't get through. If all of that had gone through, yeah. I fully admit it would have hurt markets. The issue is James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, Thomas Jefferson kept it Congress. from going through. 
uh, yeah. the, the, the Senate race in Montana is the key one to watch because it looks like the polls now are getting up to seven, eight point lead for the Republican challenger. Hmm. The Republicans are very likely going to have at least a 51, 49 majority Senate. So all that means is that this stuff Harris is talking about, if she were to win, mm-hmm. is a total waste of time. It can't get done legislatively. The spending's still a problem. Executive orders are still a problem. Energy policy. The executive branch has power. But the idea of I want to sell out of stocks, companies have an incredible way Mm -hmm. of adjusting to what's happening uh, at the White House. This is a guy who's bringing up like Federalist paper authors. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, the philosophy is great. But on Fed Day, (laughs) um, I think one of the big problems in this economy is the Fed is far too central to everything that Mm -hmm. happens. We've got to get away from that, don't we? Mm. Well, we sure do. Now, I want to know what we're doing to get away from it. Because all we do is act as if the Fed is the god of the economy. We've deified them. And all of a sudden, unemployment goes up. We go, what's the Fed going to do about it? Or there's another issue during COVID. We wanted the Fed to go fix this thing. It was a a viral pandemic, and the Mm. Fed was in charge. Um, We have made too uh, big of a role in the economy for the Fed. What I'd like them to do, I don't mind having a lender last resort. A lot of my conservative friends disagree with me. I don't mind having a central Mm. bank. It should have a very humble role, and uh, borrowers and lenders can set the price of money. We do not need a central bank doing it. And in this particular case, the Fed's role has gotten out of control. Humility. More right. of it everywhere, starting with government. David Bonson, great stuff. Good to see you. Thanks, man. You bet.